in our number 10 spot, we have a plastic bag. It is unfortunately no surprise that on one of the deepest dives we as humans have ever been able to accomplish, along with all of the amazing new creatures and never been explored places, there would be none other than a plastic bag. In 2019, Victor Vescovo took a dive into the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, which is an unbelievable feat and not an easy task, and he was rewarded by being reminded of human trash. Despite that little finding, Victor broke the record for deepest dive, which is of course amazing for scientific advancements and research. Every time someone manages to do these things that once seemed impossible, we get closer to revealing more of our ocean's mysteries that lay at the deepest points on Earth, which is very, very cool. While it would be amazing if the dives weren't plagued with plastic pollution, at least they were able to also discover a bunch of new crustaceans and give us all a little look into what life looks like in the Mariana Trench. At number nine, we have the deep sea dragonfish. Any fish with the name dragon in it is sure to be a sight for sore eyes, literally. This fish has humongous teeth, a pretty ugly face, hashtag sorry not sorry, and is known to be a deep underwater assassin. These fish are six inches or 15 centimeters long and live at the depths of six to 7,000 feet. Like many of these deep water creatures, the dragonfish also has the highly sought after bioluminescent feature. Beneath its chin dangles a lighted barbell that is used to communicate with other fish as well as is used for camouflage when need be. Other fish mistaken the light bulb for another smaller fish or even prey of its own, only to be surprised that itself is the prey and that it's way too late. Chomp! Some dragonfish even have gained the ability to glow red. Some believe that the red glow is used to signal its deep water brethren, while others believe it to be a signal of the dragonfish about to pounce. Either way, a glowing red fish sounds terrifying to me no matter how big or small, so I'ma stay in the shallow end. At number eight, we have the deep sea hatchet fish. Why is it called a hatchet fish? Well, imagine if that hatchet in your garage had fins, eyes, gills, and could swim freely around the ocean. Then it would pretty much look like this guy. Or one of these guys, because believe it or not, there are over 40 different species of hatchet fish out there, and I'm sure there is more somewhere. These fish are the same size as the dragonfish, so they aren't that big, but they can be found at depths of 5,000 feet. Be careful though, these guys are also sneaky because they have that highly sought after bioluminescent feature and can camouflage themselves from predators quite easily as well. I mean, we won't see them often because of the depths that they live at, but that's okay, I'm not complaining. I like seeing the hatchet stay where it belongs, in my garage, safely kept away from the water and only taken out when having backyard campfires. And man oh man does that sound good right now. Coming in at number seven, we have comb jellies. They have a much more scientific name, but I think comb jellies is much more fun and if you really care about the scientific name, I'll let you take a stab at it on your own. Anyway, these crazy light up alien like fish can come in sizes from a few inches all the way up to five feet. Luckily like their other jelly man cousin, the actual jellyfish, these guys don't have any stingers. But they will attack their own sometimes, so watch out for those underwater MMA matches between these guys. They swim through the ocean by swaying their comb teeth like tentacles on the side of their body and they are another sight for sore eyes, really. Just recently, the New York Times found a new way to continue researching these creatures by taking samples of their DNA from a process that is called environmental DNA sampling, where scientists collect snippets of DNA from fallen hair, skin, and mucus that the creatures shed into their environment underwater. It is said that the 200 known species could rise to six to almost 800 using this new system. I kind of would love some more, but can't deny that these creatures look totally out of this world. So, props to the jellymans. At number six, we have the sea devil anglerfish. So if a fish has the name dragon or devil in its name, you know it's one to probably look out for. Found deep in the Mariana Trench, probably from swimming up from hell, is the sea devil anglerfish. It has a crazy misshapen body, sorry to body shame, the razor-like teeth and fins, and teeth and eyes that can disappear just like that. Yeah, sounds like some demonic powers to me. Likely for everyone on the planet, these fish aren't that big. Females are larger and the biggest they can grow to be is eight inches long, while males are only about two inches. It also has a bioluminescent bulb on top of its head that lures in prey before it even has a second to swim away. Now, does this sound familiar? Yeah, it should, because if you ever watched Finding Nemo, then this is the fish that Marlin and Dory almost got eaten by. So if you happen to be a superhuman and can swim at great depths to see these scary fish, in the words of Dory, just keep swimming. Coming in at our halfway point at number five, we have the frilled shark. Remember the puffy shirt from Seinfeld with all of the frills? Well, Jerry looked pretty terrible in it, and this shark looks terrifying in it. Well, with them, not in it, because let's face it, the shark isn't wearing a shirt, but either way, I'm sure it could still make the shirt look cooler than Jerry Seinfeld. Anyway, this shark has the body of an eel with the head of probably one of the scariest creatures on Earth. It has six frilly gills on the side of its head, to no one's surprise, and can measure up to six feet in length. That's longer than me. It also has 20 rows of razor-sharp tried 
red and shaped teeth that will tear right through any flesh it can sink its teeth into. They usually live in waters around 4,000 feet deep and the odd time humans catch one and bring them to the surface, but please don't do this. One, because don't go near these crazy things, and two, because these creatures can't handle life above as they are used to the great underwater pressure. Any brought to the surface will almost die immediately. So remember, frilled sharks are friends, not food. Okay, 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 we have had dragon and demon in the names of some of our underwater creatures today. Can you guess one more that we might haven't have said? No? Well, how about goblin? That's right, coming in at number four, we have the frilled shark's trusty companion, the goblin shark. If you get one look at these things, you will understand exactly why these things are called goblin sharks. They have a large protruding snout, then underneath that is a protruding jaw of razor sharp teeth. Honestly, once again, to put it simply, these guys are just straight up ugly and scary. They also aren't the normal gray color that most sharks are. They are instead colored with a pinkish hue. In case these guys aren't scary enough, you will be happy to know that these things grow to be 18 feet in length. But you probably won't ever see one as they live at depths of 3,000 feet and go deeper the older they get. Other than that, there is not much known about these creatures because of how deep they live, but also because of how freaking scary they are. Yeah, Dewey ain't going anywhere near that thing. Starting us off in our top three, at number three is the Dumbo Octopus. I know, I know, the thing doesn't sound or seem that scary. After all, it's named after a freaking Disney cartoon, I get it, but these crazy looking things are known to eat its prey whole. They only grow to be about a foot in length, but if they can swallow its prey whole, I don't want to imagine how big its prey can be. Because maybe they even eat like snakes. Who knows? Anyway, these guys live at depths of 9,800 to 13,000 feet and are actually the deepest dwelling octopus known to science. That's pretty cool. So while these guys actually look kind of cute, I'm sure they are quite the scare for some deep water fish, as well as who knows if they evolved to have larger cousins at the very bottom of the sea. Who knows? Yeah, I don't. At our number two spot, we have the cousin of Dumbo, the telescope octopus. These things are so weird and also have a completely transparent body. Well, almost, so I guess that makes it more translucent, but I don't know. Anyway, these weird looking octopi live at depths of 6,500 feet and they don't swim horizontally either. They actually just float vertically, making it harder for deep sea predators to spot it. It also has webbing between its tentacles, giving it a ghostly like shape. And one last thing that makes it kind of creepy is that these creatures have wicked eyes. In its head are two protruding eyeballs that can fully rotate and keep an eye out for its deep water predators. What kind of predators? Well, let's check out our number one spot. And finally, coming in at number one, spot is sea monsters. Ah! Okay. Have sea monsters actually been found in the deep waters of the Marianas Trench? No. But could there be? Absolutely. I know I have gone on and on about how little our oceans have been explored, but one of those specific places in our oceans is the Marianas Trench. It is so deep that no human on earth can reach its depths fully, and even if they did, they would need an incredibly powerful pressurized submarine. So who the heck knows what else is swimming around at the bottom of our oceans? I mean, they said the giant squid was a legend and it turned out to be real, so anything goes, really. Let's just hope we find footage of a monster first and not find out the hard way, you know, by <laughs> being lunch. Starting us off at number 10 is a plastic bag. That's right, folks, even the deepest spot on earth isn't free of man's worst creation ever. Single-use plastics. During one of the deepest dives ever recorded, famous underwater explorer Victor Vescovo traveled seven miles below the ocean's surface down to the Mariana Trench. While down there, Vescovo and his crew discovered tons of new and interesting things, but not all of them were cool. He reported that he also found a plastic bag and even some candy wrappers. Down at the deepest place on earth. So, that's cool. Folks, I don't think it's a hard concept to understand, but please don't litter. Things like plastic bags were not made to help out anyone but ourselves. These cause a great danger to our wildlife all around the world, and if we have to use these materials, just please dispose of them properly. No one else should have to put up with your trash except for the garbage man. At number nine, we have the Dumbo Octopus. It's an octopus whose favorite Disney movie is Dumbo. <laughs> just kidding, that would just be weird. Almost as weird as the real Dumbo Octopus. Although, that is how it got its name because it looks like Dumbo. Anyway, 9,800 meters below the surface and found deep in the Marianas Trench, you can find these dopey, kinda cute looking creatures. These creatures go from eight to 12 inches and swim using their ears. Seems cute and friendly enough, right? Well, surprising for all of us, the Dumbo octopus is actually a predator and can swallow its meals all in one gulp. These kind of octopi also fall under the category of umbrella octopuses because they have webbed tentacles, giving them an umbrella-like shape. Almost like a starfish, but with a massive balloon on its head. Luckily, we're all too big for this dopey looking octopus to feed on us, so if you want to go for a swim and see some, you don't have to worry about them eating you. But I can't guarantee that the other deep sea creatures won't be as small. In our number eight spot today, we have comb jellies. Comb jellies are gelatinous creatures that are named for their unique plates of fused cilia, which are called combs. 
These combs help the jelly move through the water like boat oars, and while other microscopic organisms also have this sort of mechanism, comb jellies are the largest animal with this feature. These combs are also part of the reason that comb jellies are so gorgeous to look at. Rather than bioluminescence, the rainbow light effect that can sometimes be seen on them is from light diffracting off of the combs in all different directions. Many comb jellies have one pair of tentacles, although they appear to have multiple, but that is just caused by their tentacles branching out. I'm saying the word tentacles. <laughs> these tentacles are used to help them hunt like a sort of fishing line. Aside from this, these jellies don't sting, which is always a good thing. Not that I'm planning on heading into the deep sea anytime soon. In terms of today's list, I'd say these guys are one of the less creepy creatures we've got going on today. At number seven, we have the deep sea hatchet fish. It got its name because, well, it looks like a silvery swimming hatchet. There are over 40 species of hatchet fish and they can be found at the depths of 5,000 feet. That's just over 1,500 meters. This fish may be tiny, but it does not look that friendly nor welcoming. The deep sea hatchet fish can grow between 2.8 to 12 centimeters long. So while their size and appearance may not be enough to fend off predators, these deep sea fish have evolved to form an ingenious camouflaging technique. They are also like a lot of other deep sea fish because their bodies are bioluminescent meaning they create their own light and can glow in the dark. Their light shines from their stomachs, but no, they do not have any Care Bear powers in case you were wondering. Revealing a silhouette can be dangerous in the deep ocean because of predators, but luckily for the hatchet fish, it can control its light to match the same light in the water. That's the super cool camouflage technique I was talking about. Man, that could be useful. In our number six spot today, we have the anglerfish. If you've seen Finding Nemo, you might recognize these guys. This bony fish is known for its luminescent horn that is used to lure other fish as prey. There are different kinds of angler fish, but those who live in the deep sea are referred to as sea devils, which truly does feel fitting. The females are much larger than the males and can reach up to almost four feet, while the males can reach up to five and a half inches, but these little sea devils are able to eat prey up to the same size as itself. That's crazy. Luckily, most anglerfish remain so deep in the ocean that they are not a threat to humans. And even if they did live not quite so deep in the ocean, most humans would just be too big for them to even try to attack. That sure doesn't mean they aren't crazy to look at though. Just to add a little more about how strange these guys are though, these fish reproduce when the male fuses into the female and lives off of her resources until it can produce sperm. That sounds like a nightmare. Coming in at our halfway point at number five, we have the frilled shark. As if you weren't terrified enough of sharks, this one looks just as terrifying. Although, now that I see more pictures of it, I can't really take it seriously because it just reminds me of Jerry Seinfeld in the frilly shirt. Anyone else remember that episode? Sorry, Jerry Bear, the shark wore it better. The frilled shark got its name for its six to seven frilled gills on the side of its snake-like body. But that's not the creepiest part of this shark. The frilled shark has a set of 300 razor shark teeth. They can grow up to six feet in size, which is 1.8 meters. Even though this was one of the first deep sea animals to be discovered in the 19th century, it's not the easiest to find. These sharks swim at depths of 16,000 feet, which is around 5,000 meters. However, it is extremely difficult for scientists to study this deep sea creature. They swim at such deep levels that when brought to the surface, they practically die immediately. Due to those reasons, there isn't much known about the habits and life cycles of these sharks, but maybe this is just one of those things that is better left unknown. In our number four spot today, we have the ping pong tree sponge. Doesn't this name sound so cute and sweet, like something you'd want as a little pet? Well, thank you, Dad. These little things are not what their sweet name would suggest. The name, of course, comes from their appearance as they quite literally look like a little tree that's growing ping pong balls, but those little ping pong balls are where it all starts. The ping pongs have tiny little hook-like extensions that are there to trap any kind of prey that gets too close. From there, the sponge slowly consumes its prey while still alive. This may not be the most vicious creature in all of the deep sea, but it is proof that looks can be very deceiving. Would you have thought that this little thing would be a carnivorous creature? It honestly was a little surprising to me personally. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have the goblin shark. This shark might just be the creepiest thing on this list. I don't know about you, Olivia, but how did these guys get their names? Well, let's all take a look at the massive goblin-like nose on the front of its face. Yeah, that's how it's got its name. That's how it got its name. It's not really a pretty thing to look at, but at these depths, I don't think there's many people or other fish to impress. These sharks also aren't the usual grayish color. They are instead more of a pink. 
Not only do these things look absolutely crazy, they are also crazy in size. Goblin sharks can reach lengths up to 18 feet. That's 5.5 meters. You probably won't be swimming near any of them anytime soon anyway though, because they live at depths of 3,000 feet. That's about 915 meters. And the older they get, the deeper they dive. A shark that intentionally swims to its grave. How cute. Same as the filled shark, not much is known about these creatures. They are almost as mysterious and sought after as real goblins. For all we know, goblins are real, and when they get dropped in water, they morph into these crazy looking sharks and keep their distance from the rest of the world. <laughs> I buy it. In our number two spot today, we have the deep sea dragonfish. These guys are a pretty strong contender for the strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang-like teeth to grab onto their prey in the dark, cold, deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead have slippery eel-like skin which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to the anglerfish, these guys have a little lighted barbel that hangs from its lower jaw to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bioluminescence to their advantage, but they also have another, less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have a special stomach that will ensure the light cannot be seen from inside of their stomach so as to not give away their position. Secondly, they are able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see more of a blue light. So while these guys are definitely very creepy to look at, they're also pretty interesting and very talented. And finally, coming in at our number one spot and our weirdest thing found in the Marianas Trench is the zombie worm, aka the bone worm, also also known as the Osidax. But I like zombie worm best. These worms live at the very bottom of the Marianas Trench and the very bottom of the ocean and feed off of bones of dead animals, such as whales. The zombie worm secretes acid to help access the inner contents of the dead bones and it then uses symbiotic bacteria to convert the bones proteins and fats into nutrients that it then uses as food. The feathery branches on the worm wiggle in the water and they pull in oxygen to keep itself alive. Females grow up to 2 inches in length while males are microscopic in size. Sorry boys. Females will collect a harem of males on their body and then the males will find their way into the female oviducts. The female then releases her fertilized eggs into the water and the worm's life cycle begins again. That is about all we know about these little ones because they live at such deep depths of our ocean. So until us humans find ways to explore the depths of the Marianas Trench, we'll just have to make do with what we got. Starting us off at number 10 is the barrel eye fish. Now this fish isn't that creepy looking, I will admit, but it is a little gross and futuristic looking. Why? Because you can see directly inside its head. Since the Mariana Trench is so deep and dark, how the heck is a fish going to see where it's going or what's around them? Answer: They're going to make their own light. The barrel eye fish has a transparent head with two barrel like eyes inside of its head that face upwards. This lets the fish see the silhouettes of its prey. How convenient. Scientists believe that its transparent head allows for the barrel eye fish to collect just a bit more light which gives this fish just a bit more of an advantage over its deep water competition. The barrel eye fish wasn't even known to humans until 1939 when one was pulled from its underwater home at 2500 feet below the surface. Although they can't survive past a certain point as they are too used to the deep underwater pressure. Luckily scientists now have high tech underwater rovers that they can use to go learn more about the reproduction and life cycles of these strange fish. In our number 9 spot today we have the fact that life exists. The first time anyone ever went on a deep dive into the Mariana Trench no one was exactly expecting to find signs of life in the extreme environment of the deep sea. So it was quite a shock when they found out it was absolutely teeming with life. Because of the lack of sunlight, or really any light, in the Mariana Trench, you won't find any plant life or algae, but there are tons of living beings, from microorganisms to scary looking fish. All of the life in the trench has had to adapt in one way or another in order to live in this environment, whether that is naturally developing pressure proof shells or having insane ice sight that can catch even the faintest glimmer, or having other heightened senses that can help detect prey or predators. All of these special adaptations help us understand more about how life in the deep sea evolved, but some can even be used to help us advance scientifically and medically. It is no small feat to head down to the Mariana Trench, but the more we can discover down there, the better. At number 8 we have Jupiter-like microbes. Say what? 
Back in 2012, during the Deep Sea Challenge expedition, researchers found these fuzzy mats of bacteria clinging to the rocks at the bottom of the trench. Usually, one of the first things scientists look for in the harshest places on Earth are any signs of life possible. It helps them understand how life can be possible in parts of the world or even the universe that don't operate like Earth's habitable places. When scientists explored the Serena deep part of the trench with a robotic lander, they found evidence of a thriving microbial community down and around the deep sea rocks. These microbes appear to feed off of the chemicals produced with the sea when the sea floor rocks react with the water. Because they don't rely on the falling of the marine snow, it raises questions and possible hypotheses for scientists that maybe this is how some life forms exist in the farthest reach of our universe, such as Jupiter and Saturn's moons. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Daikoku Seamount. This seamount is located within the Mariana Arc and was fairly recently found to be hydrothermally active. So basically, it is a functioning underwater volcano, which is super cool. That is not even the cool and unexpected discovery I want to talk about today. During the submarine Ring of Fire expedition in 2006, it was realized that this seamount happens to also feature a pool of liquid sulfur. That might not seem like the most amazing thing, but it is definitely very cool. Firstly, the way it looks is absolutely insane because it has gases rising off of it, which appear as smoke, but like smoke underwater. I don't know the science behind it, but all I know is that it looks like nothing I've ever seen before. The next reason why this is super cool is because of the fact that this is almost never seen here on Earth, and the only other time we found a comparable pool of sulfur to this one has been on Jupiter's moon Io. At number six, we have the Mariana snailfish. At 8,143 meters below the surface, scientists discovered a new kind of fish they call the Mariana snailfish. This is a white translucent fish that has broad wing like fins and an eel like tail and slowly glides near the bottom of the ocean floor. You can also see its liver from the outside of its body. Eww. While this is the deepest they have ever found an actual fish, researchers don't believe there is much more swimming below that. The amount of pressure is so high that they don't believe any fish is chemically able to withstand the destabilizing effects of its proteins at the depth. So the Mariana snailfish may just be the deepest dwelling fish on the entire planet, which I'm sure we are all hoping for some large, weird, space looking like deep sea monster, but for now we will just have to settle for a snailfish. It's okay little guy, I still love you. In our number 5 spot today, we have human mercury pollution. It was once believed that methyl mercury was mostly produced in the top few hundred meters of the ocean, which would have limited the mercury bioaccumulation because it was thought that the fish who make their home in the deep sea would have a very limited opportunity to ingest the methyl mercury. But a recent discovery has shown that this is just not true. According to two separate studies which were presented at the Goldschmidt Geochemistry Conference, there is clear evidence of the presence of both man-made and natural methyl mercury, which is quite toxic. This means that since this is spreading to the absolute depths of the Mariana Trench, the pollution is turning out to be much more widespread than what was once thought. They know that it is coming from the mercury in the upper ocean because of some sort of isotope evidence. The reason this discovery is important is because when mercury reaches the depths of the sea, it is turned into methyl mercury, the super toxic one, by tiny microbes. From there, it gets eaten by small crustaceans, who then get eaten by fish, who then get eaten by bigger fish, and so on and so forth, and then it gets into our food web, which is dangerous for both humans and animals. It is unclear exactly what is going to happen with this information, but I guess it's good to have the whole picture in order to make the best, most educated decisions. At number 4 we have urethenes plasticus. As we learned earlier, the Mariana Trench has not gone untouched by plastics. Well, back in 2014, scientists discovered a new species at 6900 meters below and the tiny crustacean was found to already have ingested some of Earth's plastic. Therefore, they gave it the name Urethenes plasticus. With the support of the World Wildlife Foundation in analyzing the newly discovered species, scientists found a 6.5 millimeter large piece of large microfiber made up of 80% PET in its body. PET is a substance found in a variety of commonly used household items such as water bottles and workout clothes. Now, it's also found in deep sea wildlife, so much that we're naming deep sea creatures after plastics. This one is alarming because in the deepest parts of our planet that we know the least about, even less than space, we're still finding humans making their mark before humans even get there themselves. <laughs> Yikes. Let's hope we don't have to start naming species uh, Rubberus Americanus or even Coca Cola Soft Drinkus. Hmm? In our number three spot today, we have ocean sediment. Okay. 
They're sedimented in all of our oceans, so this one definitely doesn't seem like it should be on this list. But the Mariana Trench sediment is unique because of its extreme depth. While there are of course large fish who eat other fish, what do the small fish and living creatures who don't eat other fish eat? Since there's no plants, that is why researchers collected samples of the sediment that lays on the floor of the Mariana Trench to see what it is made out of to see what the heck these guys are eating. As it turns out, if the organisms aren't eating chemicals, they're eating the leftovers from the fish that live closer to the surface of the ocean. These leftovers float down to the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean, which is referred to as sea snow, and that is what becomes the meal for the smallest creatures living in the trench. Kind of gross when you think about it, but I'm happy for them. Coming in at number two, we have scalding hot water. That's right, just like Katy Perry, the Marianas Trench is hot and cold. At the deepest spot on Earth where basically no sunlight can get through, you would expect that the water was extremely cold, right? Wrong. Well, okay, maybe kind of right. The water usually stays between 34 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit, but also wrong. The water at the bottom of the Mariana Trench can also get scalding hot. At the bottom of the Mariana Trench, there are many different hydrothermal vents and the water that erupts out of these vents can reach temperatures of 700 degrees Fahrenheit, which is enough to scald anyone swimming down there. But fortunately, the pressure is way too high for anyone to actually swim down there, so that won't be happening anytime soon. That being said, for those that decide to dive deep, 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 deep down there, make sure that the deep sea sub you're in is not only pressurized, but also has an AC, because you don't want to cook like a boiled lobster. In our number one spot today, we have giant amphipods. I will never not be fascinated by these things, so here we are again with more giant amphipod facts. Amphipods are little crustaceans that can be found in most waters on Earth, and they're kind of like shrimp. The Mariana Trench variety are absolutely shocking compared to the amphipods we are used to, and that is because they are like the Shaquille O'Neal of shrimps. They're huge! These guys can be found 35,797 feet or 10,911 meters deep in the trench, and while most amphipods are like two to three centimeters or about an inch long, these guys are a whopping 34 centimeters or just over 13 inches long. Like what? A scientist explained that the discovery is a bit like finding a foot long cockroach. And I have to say that the surprise may be the same, but I would rather find a huge shrimp than a huge cockroach any day. Before the discovery of these guys, researchers didn't even know that amphipods could grow this large, so it's safe to say that they certainly were not expecting this discovery. Mm -hmm. 